For some people, photography is for capturing memories. Others like to take photos as a hobby and use the images to create something magical. Others use that passion to pursue photography as a professional occupation, whether it be wildlife photography to wedding photography. So a game where you take photos of things is something that will pique my interest. And not only does Umurangi Generation catches my eye, but the game is set in New Zealand and as a Kiwi myself, I'm generally interested in games that are set in my own backyard. Even if said backyard is hundreds of kilometres away from me, and I haven't visited the city it's set in in 20 years. Umurangi Generation is set in the city of Tauranga in the Bay of Plenty. For those who aren't familiar with where it is, it's right here. The name Umurangi is also the te reo or Māori word for red sky. The game is set in a dystopian future with your main character being a courier for the Tauranga Express. The goal of the game is to take photos of various things to complete objectives, and once completing them, delivering a package so that you can proceed to the next level. There are optional things to do in each level such as taking a postcard photo based off a picture in the area, collecting film canisters to get new equipment and features for your camera, meet a dollar value which doubles as the game's scoring system, and take a photo of your friends. Yes, that includes the penguin too. But is the game any good? Find out in... The Good. I do love the open areas you get to explore in the game to take photos in, as well as the overall photography aspect. The game is quite free with how you approach the objectives, and you can even tweak the photos you've taken with basic post-processing effects, or using a variety of different lenses you can unlock by collecting film canisters. Photography and art by extension is subjective, so it's all up to you as to how you want your photos to look, but as long as it meets the objective, the game is happy with that. Some objectives may require you to have multiple things in one shot, others may want you to use a certain type of lens. Hell, you can even take photos of things that you think look cool, the money you'll earn from it will go towards the optional score objective. I would recommend going through the tutorial to get a general idea on how the game works, and even just spend a while exploring the area, and ignore the 10 minutes to complete the delivery. Learn where all the objectives and film canisters are, and once you're ready, just breeze through the level and move on to the next one. The levels were quite varied, and I found most of them to be quite laid back, and I didn't even mind replaying some of them just because of how chill they were. I also found the story to be a little unique. The game discourages you from taking photos of a blue bottle jellyfish in it, also known as the Portuguese Man of War, and will penalise you by reducing the amount of money you earn in the photo. The game initially doesn't tell you why, but the cause is made clear as you progress through the story. The game also doesn't provide any narration as to what's going on, allowing the player to piece it together by reading news headlines and observing their surroundings to build up an overall picture of things. Posters found throughout the game also provide subtle hints as to the state of other places as a result of what's going on. However, the game isn't picture perfect, so let's take a look at what didn't work out so well with... The Bad this issue has since been somewhat remedied at the time of this review, but I found some of the objectives to be quite vague. The most infamous one being in the second level to find a sarcastic property of the United Nations printed somewhere and take a photo of it. At the time I played the game, the only place to find where that was printed was on a helmet that one of the soldiers were wearing. So all that time I spent wandering around and taking photos of labels saying property of the United Nations were for naught, and truth be told I only discovered where it actually was by accident. The game now includes another location where it can be found. Other ones include a photo of a bloodhound using a specific lens, so I spent ages trying to find a dog because since there's models of cats in the game, I figured there must be one of a dog, right? I won't spoil where it actually is. Another was to take a photo of three tyres and four pallets in the shot. Thankfully, the game now corrects the spelling of pallet, referring to the wooden transportation structure, instead of me being an idiot and thinking it was a misspelling of art pallet. I found the game's scoring system to be too forgiving. You have a target score to meet, indicated as a dollar value, and every photo you take is judged and scored appropriately. However, once you start getting better gear, the score becomes much easier to obtain. In one of the later levels, I just had to take a normal photo using a particular lens and I already had 20% of my target score. I then just had to make it up with photos featuring multiple subjects, or just take the same picture again with the same lens. I could ignore the blue bottle jellyfish penalty as it doesn't really subtract much from my overall score, and I never even noticed it that much in the long run. I think making any photo of a blue bottle in it invalid, or at the very least increase the penalty, would have been more fair, or even raise the target score a little as I was meeting these targets with relative ease. Other than that, I think I've gotten everything I didn't like out of the way, so let's wrap things up with... The Opinion New Zealand setting aside, Umurangi Generation is a very chill game. 
I really like the laid back approach of just going out there and taking photos of things while trying to work out what's going on in the game's story. Some of the objectives may be a little vague, but the worst contenders have been fixed quite promptly, which is pretty good. The scoring system did make things a little on the easy side as well. The game does allow you and encourages you to upload your photos and showcase your work, which I found quite neat. I'm not a stranger to photography games, but if chill photography games like Pokemon Snap or Africa tickles your fancy, then this game is one worth checking out. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Umurangi Generation a Tanifa out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.